listen to me. I'm going to explain to you exactly how I would break into software engineering if I had to start over. My name's Amon. I'm a software engineer and I've worked at companies like Shopify, Amazon, and John Deere. And I'm going to teach you a step-by-step -step guide to break into tech with no knowledge, no experience, no shitty boot camps, and not even a computer science degree. But first, in the age of AI, why is software engineering even valuable? I mean, we have GitHub Copilot, Cursor AI, apps like Devon, the AI software engineer coming out. So is it even worth becoming a software engineer anymore? And will this position even exist 10 years from now? Let's go back 25 years to the year 1998. Two men, Peter Thiel and Max Levchin, founded PayPal. Now, to make the first version of PayPal, it took them 1 to 2 years and 10 to 20 software engineers. Nowadays, someone could probably slap together a working PayPal in a weekend. People are doing stuff like that in their class projects and hackathons. Suffice it to say, because of computer science education, because of enhanced tools, resources, because of AI, it takes 10 times less people to produce the same output. But let me ask you one question. Are there more software engineers today or less? According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there were about 200,000 software engineers 25 years ago when PayPal was created. And today, there are 2 million. So while it takes 10 times less engineers to do the same thing, there are 10 times more of them. And the future will be no different. Yes, with tools like Devon AI, one software engineer can do the work of 10. But we will simply have way more software companies out there, way more apps for niche cases. Imagine 30 years ago you told someone there would be an app where you can ask a restaurant to go and deliver food for you, or an app where you can stream unlimited music for one monthly price. People would have laughed at you. But DoorDash and Spotify exist today. And in the future, we'll have tens of thousands of softwares, apps, that cover very specific use cases that we can't even dream of. And every one of those products will need a software engineer behind it. Now, if you're above the age of 22, you've already completed a degree in something, and you're working in industry in some other field, skip to this timestamp. This section is specifically for you, high schoolers and early college students, all of the young people watching this video. I have one question. While I just showed you that software engineering will be valuable 10, 20, 30 years from now, is a computer science degree still valuable? You as a young person are probably concerned that the field of computer science is getting more and more outdated. In fact, when I graduated college, there was just one or two classes on AI, and they were covering content from 20, 30 years ago. Imagine how behind industry college is going to be. So is it even valuable? I mean, should you just not go to college and do it on your own? The simple, most straightforward answer is yes, a computer science degree is still valuable. And if you're a high schooler, I would highly recommend doing one. And here's why. A computer science degree teaches you the mathematical and computational basics, the foundations of software engineering. But more importantly, it gives you a community of thousands of other people interested in learning computer science and tech. And that's something that's very difficult to get if you don't do a degree in computer science. You have a structured environment where you can learn all these programming languages, data structures and algorithms, operating systems slowly over four years. You also have the opportunity for internships, which give you real world experience in the world of software engineering. Something that's a lot more difficult to get if you're completely out of school. You have a built-in network and alumni community that can help you out. And finally, the monetary and social buy-in of a computer science degree at a prestigious university makes all the difference. It's simply very difficult to get an environment on your own for four years where you're grinding, spending 40, 50, 60 hours a week just purely learning. A computer science degree is how I broke into software engineering and how I would recommend you do it if you're an 18 year old. Now, if you're wondering what kind of college you should go to, unfortunately, the prestigious universities still have a reputation that will help you even in the field of software engineering. The same student who goes to a state school versus MIT, the brand name of a top 10 school does actually make a difference when landing the first interview. So if you have the opportunity to go to a school like that, or even a school like the University of California, Berkeley, Georgia Tech, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, it is worth going to those. But even if you can't, it is in no way, shape, or form going to stop you from becoming a successful software engineer. You just have to put a little bit more effort out there in developing your own skills to become a better computer scientist and programmer. Okay, let's invite the adults back into the conversation. If you're already out of college, let's say you're doing some other field like accounting or law or even medicine or sales and marketing, what's the point of switching into software engineering? I mean, you already have somewhat of a stable career, right? So why would you need to learn how to code go through all this effort to switch careers. And the most obvious reason is higher pay, of course. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median annual wage for software developers was $110,000 a year. Obviously, this figure varies widely based on location, experience, specialization. And I'm not saying you're going to earn $110,000 a year as soon as you graduate college, as soon as you become a software engineer. But let me tell you, in contrast, the median annual wage for all other occupations, so everyone else who's not a software engineer, 
according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, was only $50,000 a year. Software engineers literally earn double the average other job. Now let's take this difference over 10 years. What's the average difference between a software engineer's earnings over 10 years compared to the average other field? Over 10 years, a software engineer on average will earn around a million dollars, and the average other career will only earn around $500,000. That's a $500,000 difference to switch into software engineering and do that. And this isn't even including promotions, which drastically change your compensation as a software engineer. Software engineers will routinely double their salary Whereas in other industries, the salary increases are only maybe 2-4% to every year. Finally, if you make it to a FANG company like Meta, Apple, Amazon, you're probably looking at a million dollars over 10 years compared to some other average career. Software engineering is nearly the perfect career if you're looking for something that's incredibly high paying, but doesn't take 10 years of school like being a doctor or four to eight more years of school like being a lawyer. And aside from the monetary benefits, software engineering has a notoriously great work-life balance when you compare it to other industries that are similarly paying. So if you compare investment banking and software engineering, investment bankers will routinely work 80, 90 hours a week in the first one or two years, whereas software engineers rarely go over 50 to 60 hours a week. And that's on the high end. Software engineering also has flexible hours, remote work. It's an intellectually stimulating job, so you're always learning new information and usually are surrounded by a great community of young people or people that have tons of energy, people that are insightful, intellectually curious, that you can have great conversations with. But you probably already agree with all of that, which is why you're interested in becoming a software engineer. So let me ask you, what are the chances of you actually becoming a software engineer if you want to? I'm going to be honest, and you're probably not going to like to hear this, but it will require far more effort than you probably think. And most of you guys watching this video, if you're not already a computer science student or a software engineer, actually don't have that great of a chance of making it. I wish I could just sit here and tell you that you could watch cute little coding tutorials on the weekend, just watch some nice YouTube videos on coding and software engineering, maybe spend a couple of hours with your friend building some random project, and then one year from now you'll magically have some 200k Google job. That could not be farther from the truth. Just think about the competition. You have elite code monkey 24 year olds coming out of Georgia Tech, coming out of MIT, who are competing with you to get hired. These guys have no commitments in their life. They have no nine to five job, they have no family, they have no kids, and they can spend all day long practicing their coding interviews. They're going to beat you. So if you actually want a chance against these guys, Training to be a software engineer is going to be your part-time job aside from your actual job for at least a year. And even better, if you can take three, four months off and do nothing but prep for being a software engineer, that's even better. If you're going to do it part-time, it's going to take at least 15 to 20 hours per week of practice. And if you're studying full-time, I would allocate at least 40 to 50 hours a week of prep. And if you do that for six to 12 months, then I would give you a very solid shot of actually making it into the industry. But if you're not willing to put in that effort, if 20 hours of study per week scares you, then I'd recommend that you just get out of this industry entirely. But if you're one of the select few who's willing to actually make the commitment, who has set this goal of becoming a software engineer and is willing to dedicate your entire life outside of the 9 to 5 to doing it, then here's exactly what I would do. First of all, you need to invest in paid resources. There's a myth going around that all the knowledge you need to become a software engineer is available for free online on YouTube, on Geeks for Geeks, on the internet. And sure, maybe all the information is out there somewhere, but it will take hours a week of actually compiling all these resources for free. And even if you manage to put in two, three, four hours per week of just organizing your resources, there's no accountability, there's no structure. YouTube is great, but unless you have the time to dig through tens of thousands of coding tutorials uploaded by random people, all saying conflicting things, all different languages, no structure whatsoever, because think about it, your return is $500,000 over 10 years. So why wouldn't you invest a few thousand dollars into some sort of actual structured program or roadmap? And if you want to do that, there's this program from Course Careers, which is actually a really good option. They're a platform that will teach you everything from start to finish to land a job in tech. And they're especially useful to you if you don't have a computer science degree and you don't have any experience. Many of Course Careers graduates are actually out-competing people with a computer science degree without any previous experience. There are also industry professionals on the platform, which will mentor you and coach you throughout the process, as well as employers who hire directly from Course Careers. Course Careers is a free introduction course. You can check it out in the link in the description. I would highly recommend starting with that free course. But if you don't want to do that, some other options are doing a high ticket bootcamp. What are my thoughts on bootcamps? Well, back in the day, bootcamps were touted as this ultimate resource. You can pay 30, 40K, a fraction of a university degree and a fraction of the time 
and then in one year you'd be a highly paid software engineer. And unfortunately, a lot of these bootcamps have lied, have inflated their statistics, and the main reason why it's not that easy to be a successful bootcamp graduate is because all of these bootcamps give you the same projects. So you'll have 10, 20, 30 bootcamp graduates in the same application cycle, applying to the same companies with the same series of projects on their resume. You have no differentiating factors whatsoever. So if you just do whatever the bootcamp tells you, that is not a guarantee that you will actually find a career afterwards. However, I do think bootcamps are valuable for giving you a structured approach and some kind of motivation to actually learn everything. If you drop 30, 40K in a program, especially if it's your own savings, you will have to perform. And if you follow everything in the bootcamp, but then also do some other stuff on your own, I do think you will have a solid shot of making it as a software engineer. So I'm not saying bootcamps are out of the picture. I'm just saying that you can't just only do what the bootcamp gives you. You have to do more on the side as well. And you also have to prep for coding interviews and probably use referrals as well. Now, another option are self-paced courses from Udemy, EDX, even Skillshare. And these are also great opportunities. They're much cheaper, usually only a few hundred dollars. But the unfortunate part is that they require a lot of motivation and focus to actually complete. There have been studies that 90 plus percent of people who purchase courses on these platforms don't actually finish them. And they barely watch past the first one or two lectures. Again, I'm not saying they're not valuable. I have found incredible value from a lot of self-paced courses. But even me, I've struggled to watch the entire thing and take it seriously. I mean, there's no incentive. There's no accountability. There's no structure there. So while I do think buying a self-paced course is better than just watching free tutorials on YouTube, you need to have some kind of accountability. And the best way to do that is to put some money on the line. So give your friend $1,000 and have them only give it back to you if you complete the full self-paced course with all the projects, homeworks, and assignments. And put a specific due date. Say one month from now, you have to do the entire class, otherwise you lose $1,000. Here are your options, okay? You could do course careers. I think that's a great option. Another option is you could pay for a self-paced course, and you should probably work through three to five of them with that monetary incentive there, or you can pay a lot of money for a bootcamp. That's also a great option as well. Finally, if you don't want to use any paid resources, here's what I would do. I would pick one programming language and get incredibly good at using that. So I would pick either probably Java or Python and then watch maybe 50 to 100 YouTube tutorials on these. And I would take notes, and more importantly, I would do the projects that the YouTubers are giving you. So many people make the mistake of thinking that you can just watch a bunch of tutorials passively, not actually do the coding, not actually do the work, and get away with it, and actually learn something, which could not be farther from the truth. 80% of that learning will actually come from you doing the project, you stumbling to some random error, having to troll the internet, chat GPT, stack overflow, and debugging, because that's half the skill of a software engineer. It's hitting some error that you didn't expect to see there, that nobody warned you about, that nobody has any knowledge about, you have to actually read documentation and look at the internet to try to figure it out. So you should spend three to six months grinding finding this one language, I would also recommend learning some object-oriented programming on the side, and then of course building out those assigned projects in the videos. Another great option is doing some hackathons, even if you don't have that much experience. And the reason you do a hackathon is because it helps build out your resume and it creates some time pressure. And you also have the option to interact with members of the industry, companies that were hired from the hackathon, you're going to meet other coders and programmers. Another option is to do some free work for a startup. By doing free work for a startup for at least a few months, you have your opportunity to build up your skills and then you'll be able to add technical experience to your resume, which will drastically improve the chances of getting that first interview once you actually go out there and try to become a software engineer. After you spend three to six months really mastering one or two programming languages, you have some good object-oriented programming experience, I would recommend jumping straight into data structures and algorithms. Data structures and algorithms are the bread and butter of a computer science degree. And those are what are tested on those coding interviews that those companies will give you. And frankly, if you can't pass the coding interview, you can't get the job. So what I would recommend doing is going to needcode.io, working through the Need Code 150, and even better, purchase his program. So Needcode has a bunch of classes, tutorials, I would highly recommend you purchase those and work through the Needcode 150. And whenever you encounter a topic that you're unfamiliar with, that you have no idea how it works, I would recommend watching his video on how to actually learn it. I would also be grinding LeetCode at this point. LeetCode is a platform that hosts thousands of coding interview problems, and these companies will ask you questions that are very similar to the ones you'll find on there. So around month five or six, I would start doing a heavy amount of LeetCode preparation. Now at this point, you've learned one or two languages very well. You've done a bunch of hackathons. You have several projects from these online courses and also the hackathons. You maybe have some free experience at a startup and you're great at coding interviews. Now it's time to actually put yourself out there and start applying. Unfortunately, a company is still going to have to take a chance to hire you. When they have some 22-year-old, 23-year-old graduate with a computer science degree and five internships, it's really hard to stand out, which means that you're going to have to go for smaller companies in your local area, and ideally you use your connections from your previous career to help you in this area. So if you work for an accounting firm, if you work for a law firm, 
does your company have software engineers or does your company work with any other companies who have software engineers or do you have any contacts in the software engineer industry who could introduce you to an hr or hiring manager you will not be able to get a job at lyft uber facebook stripe it's not going to work out that will come later down the line when you have a few years of software engineering experience but you'd be surprised at how many smaller companies are willing to take a chance on motivated dedicated people who have devoted the last 12 months to grinding and learning software engineering you're a smart adult with some other profession, I believe you can do it. Now, if you want to near guarantee becoming a software engineer, I have a program. It's called a Software Engineering Accelerator. This program is optimized for people who have no experience, no computer science degree whatsoever. This is the one product I have, and the benefit of it is that you get to work directly with me. I will coach you over a period of two months into finding the best resources, into preparing for coding interviews, into answering all of your questions you have along the way. So while in this video, I've given you a ton of high level tips. If you actually want me to help you implement everything in this video to get that $500,000 bonus over a 10 year period, you can click the link in the description and book a call and we can talk about the program further. Graduates of my program are landing interviews at companies like Amazon. One person got a job at Boeing. So I think it's well worth your time. And if you want my free PDF checklist on how to actually get that first interview, there's a link in the description as well. You can go to amamanazar.com slash internship checklist. Thank you guys for watching and good luck on your software engineering journey.